Well, hello there to everyone still remote learning at home. The problem that comes in today is pretty interesting. It is a calculus optimization problem, and it's one I've never seen exactly like this before. So it involves a wire that's 20 centimeters long. We cut it into two pieces. We don't know anything about the size of the two pieces. All we know is that one piece is going to be bent into the shape of a circle and the other into an equilateral triangle. And then we are going to minimize the total area created by the two shapes. So let's get started. First things first, let's identify every single piece of information that we have. We have the total wire is 20 centimeters long. It's cut into two pieces. One piece will be bent into a circle that has a radius R. The other piece will be bent into an equilateral triangle, side length S, side length S because all of the sides will be the same. We are then going to find the value of R that minimizes the total area enclosed by the circle and the triangle. All right, so I realize they give us a lot of variables here, and I approach this problem two different ways. You can approach it by using straight from the get-go the variables they give you in the problem. But remember, when we find that equation that we are going to minimize, you need to have it written in terms of one variable. So I'm gonna try and write this from the start in terms of one variable, and then get to the variable we need clearly and namely R at the end. So what we have are two pieces of wire, all right? Very simply, we have two pieces of wire. First piece, length L. That is just L for length. And then the second piece is whatever's left over. So since we have 20 centimeters total, it's 20 minus L. In other words, 20 minus whatever we used over here. All right, what are we going to do with each piece of wire? We are gonna bend this one into the shape of a circle and this one into the shape of an equilateral triangle. So if we take this wire and bend it into the shape of the circle, this wire represents the circumference of the circle. This wire would represent the perimeter of the triangle. So this wire represents essentially pi d and this 3s, right? We have three side lengths, each s, they're all the same. But before we worry too much about perimeter, we need to remember this problem is about area. So let's use what we know and focus on area. If L is the wire used to make the circle, L is the circumference, right? So L is pi D. And because we're minimizing area, we need to use that, the fact that L is equal to pi D, to make the area for the circle. So L is in fact equal to pi D or 2 pi R. Um, and we need to use that to make a formula for the area of a circle because we are minimizing area. So if we just solve this equation for D, we just divide pi by both sides, we get that the diameter is equal to L over pi. Now we don't need the diameter, we need the radius. We need the radius for two reasons. First of all, it's in the area of a circle formula, and our problem asks us for the radius R that will minimize the total area. So the radius is half the diameter, one half of L over pi is L over two pi. Now let's get to that area of a circle we've been talking about. So area is pi r squared. We now have a value for r, which is L over two pi. So pi times L over two pi squared, our area is L squared over four pi. Let's do the same for the equilateral triangle. All right, equilateral triangle, we've got three side lengths. How did I come up with one third 20 minus L as each side length? Well, remember, the total wire used to make the triangle is 20 minus L. We have three side lengths that are equal in length. So each side length will be one third of what's left over, one third 20 minus L. If you don't remember, there is a formula for the area of an equilateral triangle. It is rad three over four times one of the sides squared because one of the sides is the same as all of the sides, right? They're all the same side. So let's go ahead and pop one third 20 minus L into here and simplify this down and get a nice area formula. So we get rad three over four times the entire quantity, one third 20 minus L squared. I know it is easy to forget to square one third, so let's pull it out and do it first. So we get area is equal to rad three over four times one third squared times 20 minus L squared. Let's clean this up one more time. We know one third squared is one ninth. We'll multiply it to rad three over four. Our area is the square root of 33 over 36 times 20 minus L squared we now have the total area. And we have to combine it to make one formula or one equation, but this is the area of the triangle and this is the area of the circle. Since we are minimizing total area, we can create total area by adding that area of a circle to the area of the equilateral triangle. 
That's the total area. This is the goal. We're trying to get to what we are minimizing. Once you get an equation for what you're minimizing and it's in terms of one variable, you can go ahead and derive the formula for that, whatever you're minimizing. So we're going to derive the formula for to total area. All right. I always take out any constant multipliers that are in here because I can deal with them at the end. So here we have one over four pi times L squared. So just pull out one over four pi. And so it's gonna be one over four pi times the derivative in terms of L of L squared plus, and again, this time your constant multiplier is just sitting out here, rad three over 36 times the derivative of 20 minus L squared, okay? Next step, let's just derive, let's leave the constant multipliers alone. All I'm gonna do is derive L squared and 20 minus L squared. So the derivative of L squared is 2L. Now here we need a little bit of chain rule, but it's not too bad. The derivative of the quantity 20 minus L squared, you bring down the two, it's two times 20 minus L times the derivative of what is inside the parentheses, derivative of 20, 20 is a constant, derivative of a constant is zero, derivative of negative L is negative one. Now what I'm going to do is take that negative one and change from addition to subtraction. So I do not have a sign error in my answer. I'm just gonna take care of it right off the bat. So I have the derivative is 2L over four pi minus two rad three over 36 times 20 minus L. We are, of course, we, we won't leave it like this. We have to clean it up, do a little arithmetic. We'll divide out any common factors and we get L over two pi minus rad three over 18 times 20 minus L. All right, so this is the derivative of our total area, what we are minimizing. So now we need to find our critical numbers. Let's, and we need more space on the screen. Okay, remember critical numbers are wherever the derivative equals zero or wherever the derivative is undefined. We don't have any variables in our denominator. We don't have to worry about undefined. We do have to set our derivative equal to zero. And this equation is ugly when you set it equal to zero just because it involves a bunch of fractions. So I have done the work for you. You can check my work. I put it out to four decimal places. So I get L is 125.6637 over 16.6755, which is approximately 7.5358. Now, every time I get a critical number or I get what I think is a critical number, I like to check to make sure it is actually a critical number. So what happens at critical values? The derivative changes direction at that point. So we're gonna put a little chart here, 7.54, just abbreviated here. I know it's actually 7.5358. And we're going to test a value before that critical value and after that critical value. Remember, I'm just gonna take something easy. I'm gonna take one. Remember, we plug a value before the critical value into the derivative and after into the derivative because we wanna see that it's actually changing directions at that critical value. If it doesn't, it's not a critical value. So you plug one into the derivative. The derivative at one is negative 1.66. And actually we don't care about the 1.66. We care that it's negative. So now let's check something after 7.54. I'm gonna check 10. You could check any number you want. So the derivative at 10 is 0 0.62929. So what we care about has happened. We have negative up until the critical value, positive after. So what's happening is we are decreasing and then at the critical value, we are increasing. So it is in fact a critical value. It is the only critical value. Normally you have more than one and then you plug them in and see which is your minimum, which is your maximum. We only have one, so we have one option here. Remember, our answer is in terms of L. We don't need L, we need R. So remember from the first thing we did, we put our L in terms of R, or R in terms of L. So R is L over two pi. So 7.5358 divided by two pi is approximately 1.1993 or 1 1.2. Okay, so that is the radius value that will minimize the area for both of these. You'd plug it in. Now they just wanted the value for R. If they wanted the areas, you would go ahead and plug them in. But that's it for this problem. This was a really unique problem. I kind of liked it. Thanks so much for sending it in. If you have questions, remember, you know what to do. Head to my YouTube page, subscribe, send me an email, send me a comment, send me anything. Teachers, check out my TPT store. And until next time, guys, take it easy.